Hello everyone, I'm your host, FPS Gaming, back with a brand new video. This video is actually, believe it or not, obviously, uh, is a follow-up to the Fall Music Part 1. And I'd also sort of recommend watching that before watching this part, so you might have a little bit more of a better understanding of where we're com of where I'm coming from here. So, as you might all know who have seen Part 1, Part 1 was more or less just a small little analysis of what we think, what Fry and I think for Fry films, and there are many things in that part I couldn't really say because Fry was kind of skeptical of what we should talk about because of maybe obvious hate, not trying to sound biased or bash people's taste in music like at all really. But now, but now, um, I'm working all alone on this, but now, uh, we, especially I, uh, I'm going to be more open-minded about this, about my thoughts on the music industry nowadays, like, and music as a whole. Now, there are a lot of people, or some, that watched part one that commented or were just straight up thinking, oh, we were just being biased toward old music and that old music is better than the new, etc., to that I say, look, we clearly stated multiple times in part one that we weren't being biased, and I clearly acknowledged that, yes, there was music with loads of negativity and monetary trash, just a bunch of, like, a heap of garbage back in the older generations of music and propaganda. Yet yeah, people seem to ignore this and rush to the comments section, just mindlessly pounding their keys on the keyboard. Although I guess I could, although I could get why this could have been the case with Fry, at least, on, on some parts, but, like, only really one, maybe just one or two, but, things he said, like, as when he said, when he, like, when he said the negativity isn't as common in today's music, he actually meant to say it's more common in today's music, so, yeah, there was a little grammatical error on, like, when he was doing his voice line right there. Look, I will say this once before the video begins. If you don't watch the entirety of what we have to say and then just blindly start pounding away at the keys in the comments on your keyboard, then your comment will be removed unless your argument makes sense and is not something so generic like, oh, you're just biased and saying that this generation stomps this generation like no it's, it's not like that anyways this video will definitely answer some questions that were probably brought up in part one like are there good modern artists like anywhere to be found do things like beats sound the same like are there any melodies or d like different things in music etc etc yeah these questions and more will be things that i hope to answer and yes, my gameplay quality for the video has improved from the shit-looking Doom gameplay in part one. <laughs> but anyways, like I might have said before, in this video I am actually doing this solo. I was going to do this with Frenchy Fry slash Fry Films, but I simply didn't feel like it, and that... This is sort of just something I need to do on my own. Just one last thing before we start for some of the evidence and some of the influence for this video. I watched a bit of this YouTuber called TG Venom. So maybe if some parts of the video seem just a little familiar, uh, that is why. And of course, no, not everything is from TG Venom, of course. This is like... My own video, of course, you know, my own content. Uh, literally. So, yeah. Uh, like, 99.8% of this is straight up coming from my own works and my own research and the facts presented. Auto-tune, bitch. Right, so, one other thing that is just bad is the abusive use of autotune. Now, if you don't know what autotune is, it's basically the software which uses a 
proprietary device to measure and alter pitch in vocal, even the instrumentals uh, in music recording and performances. Basically, it's supposed to make your voice sound better for the most part, and I think sometimes even the instrumentals in music, if I remember correctly. However, even though auto-tune is meant to serve a good purpose out there in music as a whole, for example, like, every musical artist will have just one of those days will they, where they come into, like, work, where they, or maybe even home even, where they have, like, a, uh, Maybe they're sick, you know, maybe they have a sore throat and a certain note or notes are just too hard for them to hit or something like that. And auto-tune is meant to help with this problem. Uh, and the way, but the way a lot of artists nowadays especially have been using it, it's just so fucking abusive. Like, even rap slash hip-hop music is incorporating auto-tune, like, why? Like, rapping... Like, I get some rappers, like, sung back in the day, but back then, they could actually fucking sing, and, and whatnot. Like, it just sounds so robotic now, like... It's also about what you just fucking put on that beat, the lyrics you put on that beat. In fact, some of these artists somehow sound even worse on auto-tune, literally. What the fuck, man? And what's even worse is that the musical industry is now using it to promote and say things like, Oh, these artists are good singers, when in reality, without it, they just can't fucking sing. And the music industry wants to give you that illusion that these people are great singers and whatnot, and it's giving the people who can't sing just more attention and unnecessary praise, and it becomes even more of an issue when you realize the fact that auto-tune literally takes little to no skill to use. Like, I, I even tried, like, installing it one time. I actually did, though. Like, I tried using it. It's just so easy to use. Like, even the title itself should immediately give that away. I mean, think about it. Auto-tune. Yeah, seems pretty obvious, right? Uh, but anyways, it's just very abusive. Like, if you can't sing play no instruments, remix, or anything like that, like, music-related, then maybe making, being in the musical industry, you know, making music, maybe just isn't for you. Auto-tune just makes every person's voice sound so unnatural and so robotic, like, I don't even, come on, man. And the fact that a lot of artists can even sound worse on auto-tunes, worse than that, like, it's just, oh no, it's just so bad, man. Another reason, musical artists before making good messages in their music, but now are the exact opposite. Now, you might have heard me talk about this for basically like 2.5 out of 5% of the time, maybe even 3% of the time, 3 slash 5% of the time in part 1, and me briefly mentioning that musical artists nowadays a lot of them just sound the same and just say the same garbage over and over again and i was bringing up artists like michael jackson saying that artists like these had actual good influence on kids and teens alike and that is true in fact yes there were musical artists uh before in the past that just talked about sexual and monetary trash you know, but back then there was way more variety in music. Like, it didn't all just sound the same or the same topic. Back in the 70s and the 80s, yeah, I'm going there. Back in the 70s and 80s, you saw good messages in music. And whenever something big happened in the world that was bad, people in, in the music industry would be right on top of it. Meaning that they would be super quick to demote that stuff like... Gangs, violence, constant sexual, casual sex even, rape, drugs, murder, and even smoking. And because of this, we actually did have less of these things that I mentioned. And for those who will say, Oh, well, that's just their fault because they choose to do it and stuff like that. To that I say, you're wrong. 
because music has a very huge influence on kids and teens as a whole, and kids and teens alike, and some even, and even grown-ups too, like even those, adults. Whenever you listen to something like your favorite song or songs over and over again that you happen to really like, the influence in the lyrics, if it has any really, starts to get into your head, and that's exactly what's going on here with a lot of modern music. so ironic as these artists like i mentioned before were actually believe it or not demoting all these bad acts in the world now they're just fucking promoting it like what what's up with that next reason musical artists backgrounds now this is also something that not many people tend to talk about but but it needs to be mentioned for crying out loud Part of the reason why some musicians like rappers, people in pop and R&B and so on and so forth talk about uh, like a bunch of sexual things and whatnot, about being all hood and gangster, you know, all those things like I mentioned before, well, that is partially because, well, some of these musicians come from a bad background. Like, if you look into some of these artists history sometimes it'll say were they were either a former stripper and even dropping out of school too or went to school to become a nurse or some other job like that with Cardi B uh, I mentioned in part one uh, and people like Takashi 69 I I didn't even know about the guy uh, did this to like a little later on but believe it or not this guy actually dropped out of school at fucking 13 man like come on not only that but when he was going to serve some hard time in prison for a case of his uh yeah the law was like ah uh, nah bitch and pulled out on the hard time in prison idea and he legit only served two years in prison which is so sure you can almost like say he's almost free like he got out because of this one question he was asked basically he was given a choice either be a jailbird or become a rapper and what did he do he decided to become a rapper and of course he wins again because of this and again with him and cardi b and other artists out there too most likely things that i've been talking about negativity like sex and gangs and stuff in music i mentioned before once you look at their backgrounds some of them you'll see part of the reason why they are talking about these kinds of things in music like damn what whatever happened to background checks before getting into a damn studio and a job like where is that is it non-existent all right Next reason, like reason number four, I think I'm at at this point. Musical artists that mumble and literally just say out their fucking lyrics too fast. Now, oh my gosh. Now, this is a real fucking problem that nobody seems to be talking about. So, basically, you'll get these musical artists out there that 
just fucking mumble their lyrics all the damn time. Like, what is up with that? Either that, or they'll sing, or even rap just way, way too damn fast to the point where you can't even hear what they're trying to say. Like, come on, here's here's just a few examples for you. Mama, soon I hit her, I'ma quit her. Cut my talk with a scissor, took my new car to a vert. I might need a new liver, cut my body full of circles. And these bitches go choosing, you know I got proof. I, I fought your man, girl, but you know I got proof. I, I iced out my rings and five houses in my shoes. Jack, gripping the Mac, and if you want a whole clip of your ass, a bitch suck a dick while she doing the dish. She got a small mouth the way she be lipping the Mac. Have your boots got his brains and be pepping the beamer truck. That's all the upper eggnogs and the niggas that you like to me and you get it. Topical Kuma Matata, but two in your nugget and niggas say he gon' stop. I'm gonna be small to the right to the swipe, which go back to go like a wound. Hey, how about you, who's top of the wing? When I win, when I win, I win, no win, I win, they good like she got hoes on call. Got hoes on call to come through, take a protocol, just damage it, that's my protocol. Now, as you can see, this is just complete retardation. And. I don't think I need to go any further with this. There's fucking enough said for that part. Next reason, uh, reason five at this point. Way, way too many acts. Now, this is a pretty big problem here. And why are there so many people out here just false claiming? Like, you know, like, why is everyone trying to be like the next person here? You know, Drake, for example, is from Toronto, Canada. And this person is just claiming all this tough and hard stuff on his songs, but the next thing you know, he's singing fucking terribly, and then he wants to turn it the other way around and act like he's a great hardcore lyricist. And he doesn't have any right to be talking about this. When the bastard's known for having ghostwriters, people like... Cardi B, Takashi 6 9 acting like they're all bloods and all gangster, and then you see Takashi 6 9 snitching in the court of law. And Cardi B, of course, like I said before, and showed before how she admitted to drugging men and robbing them and was a dumbass stripper. And the list can really go on from there. And you can really say this about any other musical genre. This can be said about almost every other artist out there, literally. Reason number six at this point, musical artists getting involved into religion and their music. Now, we just gotta get that elephant out of the room. Before we get started on this part, I just want to make very clear that musical artists, mainly back in the older generations, of course, made some music that sounded good about religion, like, you know, talking good about gods, about, yeah, God, the commandments, you know, that kind of thing. However, this has quickly turned the other way around this generation. And there are musical artists making very, very offensive music videos, talking down on religion and offending it, and the people who follow it, of course. Like, you know, this musical artist called Little Nas X, well, this motherfucker made a music video called Montero. I think that's how you pronounce it, Montero. And this is just shit. Regardless of whether or not you are religious, with that out of the way, it's just straight up horseshit. People really only gave this attention because of the music video itself. Not, not even the, the video itself, not even the lyrics or even the beat. They just gave the shit attention because people thought this shit was funny. And as it just included Lil Nas X doing sexual things with Satan himself. Like, what the fuck, man? This shit is just offensive. And other artists have actually done so. But at this point, I ain't even gonna name drop more fucking people at this point. Because if you know who I'm talking about, then you know who the fuck I'm talking about. Not only that, but Lil Nas X decided it was a good idea to sell merch related to this. Specifically, uh, shoes related to the Montero song with the pentagrams on them. Not only that, but apparently there are these things also saying that there is real human blood in these things. Anyway, I needed to just get that elephant out of the room with the whole religion thing out of the way. Because it just needs to fucking stop. Number seven at this point musical artists getting involved into politics. 
Oh my fucking god, yo. Now, this is more of a problem than it might seem like on paper. There are artists out there just getting involved into politics. Like, what the fuck, man? Cardi B, for example, yes, I'm referencing her again, of course. This bitch wanted to be a damn congresswoman. Like, what even is this shit? This has just gotta be the biggest joke in the entire fucking world. Like, you really want this as a woman representing the United States? Things like that are some things I'm like. <laughs> Hell. Did I hear that? Wait. Wait, hold on. There we go. Okay. Ba -ba 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 <laughs> What's the thing? I farted. What's up? I'm gonna say something. Hi. <laughs> I got a fart. Y'all heard that? You really want a bitch? like that representing our country being our next mayor or president or something like that you gotta be out of your damn mind and others like little wayne ice cube 50 cent and little pump all doing the same stupid shit and there were still sort of and there were and still sort of are people in the music industry making music on politics and on people like Trump, Biden, Hillary, and more. Like, if you have a problem with these people, just talk to them or make a critique and stop polluting music. Like, and these people, you know, they'll just also, of course, make music on these, on politics too, just talking about the people I said before like cussing them out and stuff like come on you don't need to make a damn song about that like i said before if you really think these kinds of people you know like the ones i mentioned before in the music industry just acting so dumb should be the next prey president or something like that you know representing america you're out of your damn mind come on like get your head out of your ass people next part number eight blind supporters slash stan type fans now i think i talked about this for just a little while in part one now these fans will just go out of their way to defend anything they like in the music industry and in music as a whole actually believe it or not regardless if it's a person they are a fan of even if they did something bad, like murder or drugs and that kind of thing. And then, when other people, like normal fucking people, try to bring up the truth about the music they listen to nowadays, whether it's about the negativity, the influence of the stan, etc., then they don't know how to react to it. And so, what do they do? They lash out at you and get pissed at you for doing so. And the fans are probably the main reason, the biggest reason why we are getting more of this garbage music today. Because they will just promote anything. And what's sad is that at any given time, these fans have the power up to have the power to stand up and say, Hey, your music sucks a fucking lot and we don't think it's good and it's very repetitive. But no, these fans today will just blindly always say, Yeah, we want more of this, because quantity equals quality. Like, no it doesn't, you retards. And these people think it's good to be a stand, like, you know, to act like this. And they, like, look at themselves in the mirror, like, quite literally, they look at themselves in the mirror like fucking assholes, and they stand in this heroic pose like Superman, or Wonder Woman or something like that and say or even just think to themselves in a way uh, yeah I'm a stan and that's fucking great like no it's not you dumbasses uh, next thing number 10 more no 9 more and more sellouts now this is something I don't think I mentioned in part 1 but this is important very important not a lot of people out there are talking about this, but it needs to be said. Many musical artists out there are just selling out legends as well. T 
talking about legends first you know maybe they have nothing else to do so they want to get back into the music game and then they just then they just sell the fuck out because they are being told how to make music and just like tells them to be this way like in certain make music in certain ways to be like the next person and because of this they just sell out because they just want to make money it's all about the money and the same could be said about underground artists as well like artists ju just getting into the game like you can find an underground artist that was like actually trying to be themselves and trying to be creative and whatnot but once they want to get mainstream, oh dear, oh boy, with, like with Legends, as I said before, the record label, you know, the A&R tells these artists to be this way, and to be like next person, and they too just sell the fuck out as a result. All about the money, it's not even about the talent no more, like, come on. Next part, number 10, making music for the kids and or making music for the sake of being trendy, in quotes. Now, this may seem pretty darn obvious. Being for, for the kids is such a bad way of marketing. Because these kids may find these songs good for a while, the first few times, but then, as we all know, those kids are gonna grow up. And the artist that made that song for those kids, they aren't going to be remembered, or the piece of music they made for these kids. They are mainly songs I seem to know, like about like going to the club and partying and just dumb stuff like that, and even drinking. I think and doing things just so darn recklessly, which results in music that kids have absolutely no business listening to. And as a result, just expect more idiots to be born, and more sellouts to be born. Now, trend followers? Also sounds pretty obvious, doesn't it? People who make music that sounds the same as others, and that sort of thing, and just follow trends, they don't make it either. They are very easily forgotten about, and people just stop listening to them. And that's why they just sell out, like... I sort of said before, just more sellouts. Part 11, these artists just get away with too damn much. Now this is a damn problem. Now you might already know what I'm talking about. You know the whole Cardi B thing with the drugs and the Takashi 6 9 thing, just to be brief on this. These people will just get away with this shit. And the fans, uh, and the fans will just do anything to defend them for all this too. Another example of the fans doing this is with Silent Toe. You know, this Silent Toe. Where he quite literally killed his own cousin in cold blood. What was it for? I don't know. What was it for? Drugs? money, women, what was it for? And fans were out there just dick riding this guy, saying that, oh, it was because his career flopped. Why though? I don't remember the Scorpions going out and killing people because their careers flopped. Like Cardi B, as I might have said before, she even admitted to stealing people's lyrics. Now, before people rush to the comments saying, Oh, it's just remixing. To that I say, no, it's it's clearly not. From what I recall, all her music is basically like this. And not only that, she didn't even give credit to any of the original artists. So, it's clearly not remixes, you retards. And people cheered it, and she gets rewarded for this shit. Like, I cannot take these people seriously. Because of all this just false nonsense and just getting away with so much. Part 12 now, the loudness wars. Now some people might even know what I'm talking about here, but for those who don't, basically it's 
a war. It's literally like an actual war in the music industry to see whose music can sound the loudest. It doesn't even matter if the audio starts clipping or anything like like that, or even if you can't hear what the fuck the lyrics are saying. Even if you can't, yeah, pretty much. Uh, like, where's the dynamic range? Whatever happened to audio engineering? Where's audio engineering at? Does it not exist anymore? But anyway, I just wanted to be brief on this because, you know, it needs to be said because this loudness war, it, it really needs to stop. Part 13. Are we in a fashion show or are we here to listen to some music? Don't tell me some of these artists don't get no plastic surgery. Why do they get plastic surgery, you may ask? Because quantity. The little boys, little girls, and all the little goofballs out there, and even some older people people just praise these artists because of their looks and they're like robots programmed to like these musical artists and they will like them mainly because of a certain look and the music industry believe it or not will hire people for this you know for a certain look and some artists out there that are actually good are being overlooked because of this like why these artists will also just sing about this shit too, like, oh, look at the hair, lips, eyes, the abs, etc. Now, look, bud, I don't care about what you look like, what gender you are, I don't care if you're gay, lesbian, or trans, I don't care about how much sex you can have in one night, what your skin color is, and I don't care about the shit you take in the toilet every day. And the music industry sometimes just ignores the fact that looks don't matter. That ugly people, or even average looking people, can't make music. And even the fans, some of the time, if not even a lot, uh, will, regardless of if the music is good, they'll just, if the artist doesn't look good or is just average looking, they'll just say things like, Oh, the, he or she doesn't look that good. Why don't, why don't, why aren't they wearing this? Why don't they look like this? Yeah, da, 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 da. Like, are we in a damn fashion show, people? Or did we come here to listen to some music? Get your damn heads out of your asses. Come on. Part 14. Barely any melodies in music nowadays, and some. A lot of times, even the same beats, believe it or not. Uh, why does almost every beat maker nowadays make the same fucking beats? And why are there barely any melodies in music, in today's music? I'll tell you why, because like I said before, these artists and the industry and these greedy ass record labels just want these artists to go in the studio and make their music even though it's, you know, about the same topic and that kind of thing to make money. And that's also why there's a lot of beats in music today that just sound the same in melodies. Damn, I can't stress this enough, but if your music doesn't have any form of melody in it, then it ain't going to stick. You could find a song and you might think, Oh, this has a catchy tune, man. And you're tapping your feet to it and stuff like that. But when you find another artist in a different song, then you're going to completely forget about the song you just listened to prior to that. You'll, fo you'll forget about the song, who made it, who made the beat, etc. Why? Because like I said before, there was probably no melody or the beat just sounded the same like damn it just didn't stick 15 per 15 why does almost every single artist out there want to look the same like you know same coding style <sighs> why oh why does this have to be this way and this is also a lot 
more common and say something like rap music like why does every artist want to look like the next person now skinny jeans golden chains all bling bling caps on backwards and the list can go on from there really same shoes you know etc and you can even say this about like any other genre out there as well like the lyrics and beats like i said before are already the same a lot so we really don't need people out here just all dressing and looking the damn same like please just be your fucking self just be your fucking self whatever that just expressing your own personality being yourself part 16 um a lot of these musical artists are great influences for children hell no now, this isn't about the music itself, per se, for this part. This is about the influence these artists have on kids and teens as a whole. Now, I really don't need to go far with this. Like, you know, musical artists talking about sex all the damn time, their looks. People like Billie Eilish, yeah, I'm going there, I fucking said it. Like, always acting all emo with her hair all died and shit and whatnot just fake feelings and whatnot like come on depressed and crying all the damn time is apparently a good influence on kids how about cardi b yes i'm going there but just to make sure i don't drag on with cardi b in this part slash section uh here's just a little video so you want this as an influence for children like what's up with this bitch throwing shoes at people his text what happened <laughs> yeah rest my fucking case with that part part 17 ghost writers okay i might have mentioned this a little briefly but this shit needs to be said a lot of lyrics in music nowadays sounds either the same, if not similar. You wanna know why that is? Because ghost writers. A lot of artists nowadays don't even write their own lyrics. They basically have ghost writers. Like, the writers don't even exist or something. Which just leads to a lot of shit sounding the same. It's not even good either, like, come on, enough with the ghost writers. Part 18. Why is music only trying to convey two emotions? It sucks, too. Like I might have said before about artists out there making music for people to be all emo and so depressed and edgy, it's not cool, and for kids, too. Most songs out there today just try to be all like, Oh, we're so happy! Happy, happy, happy! It's all sunshine and rainbows and unicorns. Or, we're so depressed and crying all the time so you can cut yourself and cry yourself in the corner. Like, this isn't cool. And the feelings thing, especially the being happy all the damn time, it just doesn't work. It just doesn't, like at all. It just feels so forced and annoying when, aha, you know, the musical artists that uh, may take on me, Michael Jackson and the Beatles and other artists like that were, were making music. They didn't need to force and talk about emotions all the damn time. We just felt that listening to the songs. You know what I'm saying? I guess in a way it's like, it's a case of show, don't tell. Like, you don't need to talk about feelings all the time. Like, come on. Part 19. Look, remixing ain't a bad thing. But people say all artists are doing that that also all sound the same. Look, I'm not saying remixes are all bad and whatnot. I'm just saying that remixes are not something you should rely on. And there are many artists out there like Cardi B, and people say that she does that shit. Remixes. To that I say, 
No, she clear she clearly didn't give credit to the original artist from what I remember. She admitted she steals them and not saying anything about remixes either the whole time. So this whole thing about Cardi B and other dumbass artists like her doing remixes needs to stop. And she won five Grammy Awards, like a Songwriter of the Year Award, that kind of thing. Yet she didn't write this shit, so rest my case with dumbass artists like that. But remixing ain't all bad. Like, for example, SWJ slash Single White Glove is a channel on YouTube that does Michael Jackson remixes. And the remixes he makes are great. I've seen bad Billy Jean and Thriller. And they all sound great because he made the song sound good with the mixing and it doesn't sound the same like loads of mainstream artists out today. So yeah, that's my brief little take, my brief little thing that I have for remixes. Part 20. Are there any good artists to be found? The truth to this question is yes, but not really in the mainstream. The good artists are usually found in the underground. Yeah, I get there are some ones that are trying to be trash, of course, but I'm not saying all are in the underground, but there are some. And the ones in and the ones, some of them that are in the underground usually are great and are really creative and are trying to be themselves. However, these artists are getting overlooked for a lot of garbage in modern music today and it's just sad to think about. And a lot of people out there say things like, well, this ain't the 70s or the 80s. To that I say, it doesn't have to be the 70s or the 80s, you retards. It just has to be good. There are also good artists making music for video games, but, well, that's for another video. Part 21. Only three genres, really, are making it. Now, Fry briefly mentioned this in part 1, but this is very much true. There are really only three genres that make it nowadays. From the research I've done, the only three genres that are really currently doing well are rap, pop, and R&B, which of course very much limits creativity and just closes more doors on people who are trying to be creative and trying to be themselves and opens more doors for people who are more greedy musical artists and record labels and such. Part 22, when did this start happening? Now, this stuff actually sort of started happening in the 90s. In the 90s, you really started to see songs get popular that were about things like, oh, we like this handsome boy or pretty girl, you know, look at the teeth, the eyes, hair, abs, etc. And then over time, this shit just got worse and worse, which then helped bring us to the shit fest of music that we have today, just to get, just to get when this, you know, I just needed to get this out of the way, it's just when this shit start happening, you know. In conclusion, overall, for these reasons, I really think music as a whole has just taken the wrong steps and is still doing this to this day, going in the wrong direction. And I just want it to be better because right now it has been dog shit for quite a while, like 15 to 20 years and it's like kind of sad to think about it's just gonna get worse and worse by the days go on if we don't somehow put a stop to it well anyways guys 
that'll be it for this video. And I plan to make a video talking about video game music. As that is something I brought up in part 1. And I also plan to do a video talking about the Xbox 360. Why the Xbox 360 was and still sorta is my favorite Xbox console. And more videos to come down the road. But anyways guys, what do you all think about this? I like to he I like hearing your thoughts. Sign off in the comments below and I will see you in the next one. Take care boys and girls and MBs too.